Hello everyone, how are you doing? This is MD Tech here with another quick tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to resolve if Windows cannot install the required files for the Windows 10 installation. So this should hopefully be a fairly quick tutorial and we're going to jump right into it. And the first thing we're going to do is open up a web browser. It doesn't matter which one, but basically we want to start by getting and downloading the Windows 10 Media Creation Utility. And you want to type into Google Windows 10 Media Creation Tool. Download the Windows 10 disk image, so just click on that link. And now you want to select Download Tool Now. Keep in mind, you don't actually have to do this on the computer that you are installing or resolving your Windows 10 upgrade issues with. As you can see, I'm on a Windows 7 device here, so it doesn't really matter. But we're going to left click on Download the Tool Now. And you want to save the file. It should take a couple moments to download, so you just want to be patient with it. Once it's done downloading the tool, just left click to open it up like you would any normal file. And if you receive a user account control window, you want to select yes. Okay, so at this point you want to accept the end user license agreement or the software license terms. And again, this will take a moment. I'd recommend selecting Create Installation Media, USB Flash Drive, DVD, or ISO for another PC. And select Next. At this point, I'd recommend unchecking use the recommended options for this PC, especially if you're installing it for a different version than maybe what you'd be upgrading this current computer to. If you're using it for this current computer, then sure, use the recommended options, but if you're doing it for another machine, I'd recommend unchecking it. And then select Next. Then you want to choose which media to use, whether a USB flash drive or an ISO, which you'll have to burn to a DVD on your own. And then you would just select Next. You would insert a USB flash drive if you select that method, or if you just did the ISO, you would do next. And then you would extract the ISO to a desktop or some output area, it doesn't really matter. And then you would burn the ISO file using a DVD burner. And then at that point, I'd recommend booting your computer off of that device. So go through the boot options or through the BIOS, and you want to change the boot order to boot off of that flash drive or the DVD, whichever method you chose here. And that's where we're going to pick up the video again. So again, I'd recommend going through this process, selecting the media. It will take a little bit of time to download. In my experience, it takes a good hour or so to download this, so just be patient. And once it's done, I will be right back. And I'm back. So I have successfully burned the Windows 10 ISO file to a DVD. And you might be prompted when you're using the media creation utility if you want to open up the DVD burner on your computer and it will walk you through how to do it and it's pretty straightforward that method as well so just going to put that out there and now we can see underneath Windows Setup we want to select the correct language time and currency here as well as the keyboard or input method once you've done that you want to select next once you've ensure that's correct and now you want to select this install now button right here and now this will take some time, so just be patient. Now, if you have a product key, like let's say you bought a retail version of Windows 10, you can insert the product key here, and you might not even be prompted for this if you're upgrading an eligible Windows computer. However, if you do not want to install with a product key at the moment, you can just select I don't have a product key, and you can continue with the installation. So if you just want to select that, you're more than welcome to. And now at this point you want to select the correct operating system. So for most people it probably will be Windows 10 Home Edition if you're upgrading from Windows 7 or Windows 8 
Home Premium for Windows 7 or Home Edition for Windows 8 or 8.1. However, you can select Windows 10 Professional if you were running Windows 7 Professional or Ultimate Editions beforehand. So once you made your selection, you would just select this next button right here. Again, you're more than likely going to be selecting the Windows 10 Home Edition or the Windows 10 Professional Edition. It will likely be one or the other. Then you want to check mark that you accept the license terms after you've looked through the end user license agreement. And then proceed to left click on this next button. And now we have a couple options here. Like I said, if you wanted to upgrade your computer, select the first option which will install Windows and keep file settings and applications. The file settings and applications are moved to Windows with this option. This option is only available when a supported version of Windows is already running on the computer. And the second option underneath is to just do a basic clean install of the Windows operating system. So it'll say the file settings and applications aren't moved to Windows with this option. If you want to make changes to partitions and drives, start the computer using the installation disk. We recommend backing up your files before you continue. Since this computer is a clean slate, I'm going to select custom. However, if you're trying to upgrade your computer, you can select the first option. And now, depending on how many partitions you have set up on your computer, there might be multiple drives listed here. You want to select the one that is more than likely going to be the largest on this list will be your main hard drive. Some people have backup drives for partitions. So I only have one listed here so it's very easy for me to pin it out. And if there was a file type it would be NTFS or something along those lines. In my case it's blank. But you want to make sure you're selecting the correct drive and there really should only be one or two perhaps listed here. And keep in mind if it's showing a drive size in megabytes you're going to have to convert that to gigabytes. So if you have a 512 megabyte backup, it's not as big as a 25 gigabyte drive. So you'd have to consider that 1024 megabytes is one gigabyte, if that makes sense. So I'm going to select our only drive here again, and then I'm going to select next at the bottom. And this will begin the Windows installation process, so you have to be patient. This will take a couple moments because it is not only going to be installing Windows, but as well as installing updates through the process. So you just want to be patient, and I will be right back.
Okay everybody, so we can see that we have a new screen here, saying a little sign in here, and you can see that the screen is definitely improved or it's changed since the last time I've been through this video. So we can see we have our mouse functionality here. So if you had the speaker enabled, you could turn it off by clicking on this little speaker icon and it appears it's going to start trying to talk to you maybe. So again, just want to be patient here. And it's going to ask you where your region is, where you're located. Once you've selected your region, you want to select yes. You want to select the right keyboard layout. Scroll through using the scroll right here. Select yes. If you don't want to add a second keyboard layout, just select the skip option. And now you might be prompted if you want to try and connect your Wi-Fi signal. Since I'm in a virtual environment, I believe it automatically is going to connect me, so I'm not going to have to worry about that. But if you have a network adapter, you might have to insert a Wi-Fi password. So just make sure you have that nice and handy around. Because like with any Windows installation or any computer installation, you're going to have to set up some basic uh, functionalities when you're installing the operating system. So there we go, guys. We can change how we want to set up our account. So we want to set up for personal use. We can select the first option, which will give you a personal Microsoft account. And you can also set up for an organization. The first one, we should have an option to set up a local account here as well. So we can set up for personal use. Even if you want to do a local account, you still want to select the first option here. And then select Next. And now instead of creating an account, which you can do if you want to create a local Windows account, you can left click on this offline account option at the bottom left. It's basically the same thing as a local account. And again, they're going to try and really push this Microsoft account. I'm going to select no here. And then at this point, you can name your computer whatever you want. And you can see they're still advertising down here to keep using their online Microsoft account, which again, you don't need to do. I don't want you guys to be concerned about that. So I'm going to name this computer John Smith. Then I'm going to select next. Now at this point you want to enter in a password. So just type in a password here. Then select next. Now you have to confirm the password. Next again. And now you can add a hint for your password. Because I just exposed my password to you guys. So you want to insert a hint here. And select next. And if you wanted to enable Cortana, you can by clicking on yes. You don't need Cortana in order to conduct searches on Windows 10, so I'm going to personally say no. But again, you guys are more than welcome to go through and customize this stuff however you choose to do so. And personally, I'm going to deselect most of these privacy options here to disable location tracking, speech recognition, and a lot of this other stuff here. You can read through this stuff how you want to personalize it, but for the purpose of this video, I'm going to turn most of this stuff off. Then I'm going to select accept.
Okay guys, so we can see Windows 10 has been installed on our computer and we should have all the functionality of the Windows 10 operating system now available. Now if you didn't insert a product key, I would recommend that you try and get that taken care of. However, it shouldn't hinder any Windows update functionality and there's only some minor visual effects for not activating your copy of Windows 10. So then at this point, I would recommend start saving everything to your computer and you guys should be pretty much good to go. So there we go guys, Windows 10 has been installed on our computer, everything should be here. And as always, thank you guys for watching this tutorial, I hope I was able to help you out. And I look forward to catching you all in the next tutorial. Goodbye.